Yeah, I got a lot of comments, probably a couple thousand a week of like, I liked you better when you were taking dicks in your ass. You're better off with cum in your face. Like I got it all and it really was able to help me build this thick skin where I would say, oh yeah, that's right. You think my brain fell out my vagina when I opened my legs. That's not the case. I mean, I do it the same way everybody else does. I listen to four hours of fantasy football podcasts every single day, starting the first week in August. July, I was listening to my weekly shows on fantasy sports radio. Like, I just stay up on the news, and I enjoy it. It's better than watching the actual news. Yes. It's better than really what's being offered on television right now. We don't have a lot of good news shows. We're all waiting for our shows to come back. Billions is coming back. Like, we're all waiting. But I got a lot of negativity, and I will say that it taught me how to process information. It taught me to look at social media and say, like, these are strangers. They don't know you. They don't have any control over your thoughts. If you let this bother you, it's on you. So I still clap back once in a while, but I've really learned to just go, okay, it's not to be understood by everybody. And some people are truly offended when they see me in person because they're uncomfortable with the amount of porn that they watch. They recognize me right away. They don't know how to process the information that I'm actually allowed to walk the streets like a normal person and they become nasty with me. And that's when it really catches me off guard because I realize what they're projecting is just their own confusion sexually and their own animosity towards me because I've been successful at something that I think a lot of people deep down inside would rather see all the men and women in the industry fail, become addicted to drugs, not make it because we like to pine on that sad story that the industry is, but it doesn't have to be that. Yeah. Well, I imagine it must feel something like having uh, an ex girlfriend or side piece walk into a family dinner. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's this internalized <laughs> self-loathing. Right? Yeah. That's all it is. Rage is depression turned inward. That's the phrase, right? So yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, let's, let's go your uh, fantasy football top five here uh, real quick. Cause look, we have a ton of listeners that play fantasy football. Dan and I host six leagues every year. Let's say you get the first pick in this year's draft. Who are you going with? You know, I still have to go with Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. I think he's going to have all the work again. I trust him coming back from these injuries. I've been watching everything on his Instagram and social media. I do follow all of the accounts to just watch their workouts. I know it's it's all hype, but I'm confident with his return. Saquon's a little bit concerning because I don't really know if you're going to get strength from Saquon to like week four or week five. Mm. So if you're <laughs> picking up Saquon, second or third pick, you've got to be prepared to not be completely satisfied at the beginning. You're also relying on Daniel Jones, but the Giants did do a little bit of work on their line. Zeke is looking best shape ever. We're going to see a lot of that at, at camp. We're also going to see a lot of him on hard knocks. Uh, yep. My perfect drinking game is going to be Jerry Jones and Zeke. Like you just drink each time you see one of them because mm -hmm. you know we're going to see them a lot. Mm -hmm. I still really like Aaron Jones. Uh, I can't discount Alvin Kamara. And I'm just seeing up until the pick six, nobody's jumping off the running backs. And for me, at that point, I'm definitely going Tyree Kill or Devontae Adams. No Derrick Henry in that top five. He doesn't right. really put I up big numbers slip. until later in the year, though. Yeah, but that's when the like playoffs are. He's, he's, he's always off to a slow start. Yes. And that's when the playoffs are. I did are. slip on Derrick Henry. He would be in my, he would be for me ahead of Saquon Barkley for sure. So I'd push Saquon to like five, put Derrick Henry at like three, uh, move that up. But you're right. Just slip my mind. Derrick Henry, yeah. though he doesn't get bigger points, he does warm up. You're right, midway yep. through the season. But he's so consistent and he's always out there. You know, he's, he's always available. And that's really what you want in fantasy. And that's Exactly. And that consistency is what I try to go for, especially with like flex positions. Um, shit. I, I probably drafted James White for eight years in a row just because he was a consistent. Because you knew what you had. Yes. 14 points out of the flex yep. position. Yep. And I, I didn't give it every year. I had James White up until Brady left. Uh, that new guy who's replaced him is, is uh, Landry for me. Uh, out of Cleveland. That guy is still 10 to 12 points a game in a flex position. I love him every yep. single week. Um, if you go quarterback first round, which, look, depending upon who you listen to or what you read, isn't the smartest choice, who do you go quarterback first round, it, gun to head, if you had to take one? What, are you kidding? And do you? If, if, you're, if you're pick 12, do you? Okay, gun to head, I'm going to be torn between Mahomes or Josh Allen. I really love what Josh Allen did last season. I see no reason. I hear all these broadcasters talking about regression and that his luck was the fact that they didn't have fans in the stadiums and that helped him. I don't really think that's the case with Josh Allen. I think Steph Diggs was just such a big monster addition. Even Beasley was consistent when needed to be. So it would be Mahomes 
or it would be Josh Allen for me. Oh, I mean, Josh Allen, how often in any sport have we seen a guy that young get a huge contract and come back and have a baller year the next year? Fernando Tatis this year is the only time I remember it happening any time recently. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll see with Mahomes because this will be this year for him. Exactly. Right. But with Mahomes last year, like you know, look, he wasn't a top five uh, <laughs> quarterback. Um, the injuries obviously set him back. The Chiefs team to me is Mahomes in particular is so hard to draft because they're so good. Well, they have so many pieces. How do you know where the distribution is going to go? Well, that and, and they don't turn it on till the end of the game. Like towards yeah. the end, in gambling wise, I started betting against them on the spread. Well, or their using live lines a six are point good. Teaser, yeah. yeah, their live lines are really good because they always get down and yeah. they'll find a way to come back. Um, but uh, fantasy wise, he he was okay last year. Uh, Rogers, you know, tore the doors off the place, but. Uh, I like Josh Allen because of his legs, <laughs> and all of those running points add up as well. Uh, Lisa Ann, you really know your shit. Um, Amps, what, what's, tell everybody the name of your show on SiriusXM. Actually, I'm doing all of my stuff on my own this season, so I do all of my IG lives with different beat reporters and broadcasters at Bovada, so you can check out all of my sports talk, IG live at Bovada, and then everything else you can just find at The Real Lisa Ann. So that's going to be YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I'll be doing start sits uh, every Sunday morning live on YouTube this year. Yeah, you know, in May, I think I thought I was being unique, uh, quitting my job post-pandemic, but then I realized everybody did it. I just want to be on my own for a year, and I just really wanted to spread my wings a little bit. I was doing my podcast through Sirius, the least an experience, yep. and now that I'm producing it myself, I can put it on YouTube. I had a lot of limitations, and I learned how to do so many things during the pandemic. I learned how to edit. Uh, I learned how to create different content using different cameras. I learned how to do things, so I just decided, hey, you took all this time to learn. We still don't know what's going on with the world. It's still kind of touch and go out and about so kind of like why bother let's just stay and enjoy the year of just creating your own content and see how far it goes